In this video, we're going to do a quick review about some things you need to know about angles. We're also going to talk about angles being expressed as minutes and seconds, and then how exactly to change those into decimal degree form. So let's begin here. The initial side of an angle is where it starts, and our terminal side is where it finishes. So here we have our start and our finish. So again, we finish on the terminal side, and we start at our initial side, side, and the space between those, that is our angle. So when we move in a counterclockwise manner, this produces a positive angle. And when we move in a clockwise direction, this produces a negative angle. So here we can see that we have an angle A or an alpha and an angle beta and together they make up the 360 degrees. Notice that alpha and beta have the same initial and terminal sides. These angles are called coterminal. So even in this other example here, where our beta is going around multiple times, we still end up having coterminal angles. Down here, we see our degrees measured in both degrees or rather degrees on the unit circle. And here we have our quadrants and which angles live inside of those quadrants on the unit circle. Let's do a little more review about some parts of angles that you might recognize. So it's important to know and remember as we start to go into angles and their measures, really what does it mean to be acute? So an acute angle is between zero and 90. A right angle means it is exactly 90 degrees and depicted with a right angle symbol. An obtuse angle is between 90 and 180. Now, if an angle is 180 degrees, that is called a straight angle, and it's really a half a revolution. And an angle that is 360 degrees is one full revolution around. Let's talk a little bit about how we can find coterminal angles. So, when we're trying to find coterminal angles, we can use the angle plus the number of times around times 360 or the angle minus n times 360. Again, where n is the number of times we're going around our, our circle. So if we're trying to find the coterminal angle and it's asking us for one positive and one negative angle for the following degree. So here we have theta equals 390 degrees. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, okay, 390 plus one time around times 360 equals 750 degrees. So I have my positive angle. So that means that this angle, 390 and 750, have the same initial side and the same terminal side. So I need to find a negative. So I'm going to do the minus, and I'm going to use the one revolution around, but I see that when I do that, I still end up with a positive 30. And so I don't want a positive angle anymore. I want a negative angle, which means that I might need to go two revolutions around to get there. So 390 minus 2 times 360 will produce our negative 330. So now we have our negative angle as well. For part B, we have theta equals negative 120 degrees. So again, we're going to start with our angle at negative 120 degrees, and we're going to subtract 1 times 360, and that's going to give me a negative 480. It doesn't matter which one you do first, adding or subtracting. So now we need our positive angle. So I'm going to go ahead and do my negative 120 plus 1 times 360. And when we do this, we see that we get a positive 240. So here, it only took one revolution around to find a coterminal angle. Let's move on to a different type of example. So our next example says, use the angle conversion capabilities of your graphing utility to convert the angle measures to decimal degree form. And we see that our first example says theta equals 64 degrees and 45 minutes. And our example B says theta equals negative 408 degrees, 16 minutes and 25 seconds, which is really confusing. Well, historically, fractional parts of degrees were expressed in minutes and seconds using the prime and the double prime notations, respectively. So that's saying that one minute would be one sixtieth of one degree, and one second would be one 3,600th of one degree. 
many calculators have special keys for converting our angles into degrees, minutes, and seconds, which we call decimal degree form, and being able to go backwards as well. And so that's what we're going to, to talk about and to do and to learn how to do here. So we're going to pull up our calculator to help us a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and put in our 64, but to get the angle symbol, we need to go to second apps. So we're going to second apps. Oops, that was not the apps. We'll try that again. 64 second apps. And there we see our angle symbol. Notice that below it is also our minute symbol. So we can go ahead and put our degrees and then 45, same thing, second apps, and go down to minutes. And now when I hit enter, I'm going to get my decimal form, 64.75. Well, what happens when I have seconds? Well, when I have seconds, we're going to go to alpha and then the plus sign. So if you look above the plus sign in green, we have the seconds symbol. Because it's in green, we know that we need to hit the green button first to get there. So in order to convert negative 408 degrees, 16 minutes and 25 seconds into decimal degree form, we'll go negative 408 and we'll go to second apps to get our degree symbol, 16. And then for minutes, we'll go to second apps again to get our minute symbol. And then 25, we'll go to alpha plus sign for our seconds. We'll hit enter, and that will give us negative 408.2736111 as our angle.